coming to you from the studio where we tape my uh, vaunted and highly respected political commentary show that we do each and every week called America's Evil Genius. But before we go through with our taping today, I wanted to take some time out and discuss an upcoming wrestling show that's coming to the Argosy Bell Casino on May the 10th and the 11th. It's kind of a St. Louis Night of Legends thing. If you're in the St. Louis area, you have probably seen billboards all over town about this thing, and you've seen some of the names are going to be there. Cowboy Bob Orton, Baron Von Raschke, Greg the Hammer, Valentine, Larry Madison. There's a whole list of them. And you might think to yourself that this is going to be a show that's simply about celebrating old wrestlers of the past. Well, I suppose it is to some degree. But what you may not know, and what really has not been advertised, uh, and, and should have been advertised in my estimation, is that this is also going to be a celebration of the dawning of some new legends in professional wrestling. Some, some people coming up in the ranks in St. Louis that are ready to take that step towards being legends themselves. Of course, I am talking about the Travis Cook organization. Iron Man, Ken Costa, the classic wrestling champion, Mr. Unpredictable, Dave Vaughn, and yours truly, Travis Cook. You know, Ken Costa's got a great match at night schedule where he's going to defend the classic wrestling championship against Chris Hargis. And Hargis got his uh, shoulder injured by Costa here a while back, and he's been upset about it. He's been trying to interfere in our matches, and he's failed Mr. Blade every time he's tried to do so. But he's going after the title that night. And I know some of you are, are a little bit confused. You're, you're, you're questioning why I'm saying Ken Casa is a classic wrestling champion. You're a little bit confused because Ricky Cruz is running around with a title belt somewhere. Don't, don't be confused. Koss is the real champion. He's got the trophy to prove it. In a tag team match, Mr. Unpredictable Dave Vaughn will team with the Big Texan against Chaz Wesson and Greg the Hammer Valentine. Now, this is a big match for a lot of reasons because... I'm not going to sit here and, and run down Greg Valentine or, or tell you he's washed up or anything like that. Everybody knows Valentine's reputation. He's held more titles than probably about anybody in professional wrestling. Intercontinental champion, WWF tag team champion, United States champion, you name the belt, he's probably held it somewhere. But as far as I'm concerned, Greg Valentine to this day still holds the one title that Dave Vaughn and myself want more than anything. And that is the title of the professional wrestler who's injured more wrestlers and put more wrestlers on the shelf than anybody else. You see, Greg Valentine, he broke Wahoo McDaniel's leg. Greg Valentine, he put Chief Chase Strongbow out of professional wrestling for good. Greg Valentine, he injured Rowdy Roddy Piper's ear to the point that he still has a hard time hearing out of it, even today. Well, the way I look at it, if Dave Vaughn goes in there and injures Greg Valentine, ends Greg Valentine's career on May the 11th, suddenly, we have that reputation in one night the reputation that Valentine put together over years, we're going to have it in one night. And when people hear that Greg Valentine is in the hospital, believe me, all the locker rooms in New York and down there in Orlando and over in Japan, they're going to be asking, who's this Dave Vaughn guy? we got to get a hold of him. we got to bring him in. It's all part of the master plan. Now, there's one other issue i got to deal with. A lot, of other, a lot of other legends are going to be there, and one of them I've got a personal beef with myself, and I'm going to address it that night on May the 11th. And that one man is Jerry Briscoe. Now, for those of you that might not know, Jerry Briscoe, yes, he is a wrestling legend. I'm not going to take that away from him. But he's also an esteemed executive in world wrestling entertainment. Jerry Briscoe has a nice big corner office up there in Titan Towers. And Jerry Briscoe has a nice big desk that he sits behind and props his feet up on every day. And Jerry Briscoe has an awful lot of gophers and secretaries and whatnot to do whatever he tells them to do. And ostensibly... Jerry Briscoe's job is to go out there and find talent and, and develop talent and put them in a position they can really help the company. Well, I got a real problem with that because, quite frankly, Jerry Briscoe, you've been doing a horrible job of finding talent up there for the vaunted WWE. You guys are struggling to get TV ratings. You've just come off of a WrestleMania that was universally panned by every critic on the planet. And meanwhile, down here in St. Louis... This little promotion is getting quite a bit of buzz. This little promotion is doing some good business. This little promotion is getting attention. And I would offer to you that it's entirely because of Travis Cook and the men that I find, the men that I develop, the talent that I trained and put together. In other words, as far as the track record goes, I'm smoking you, Jerry Briscoe. I'm not like some of these people in the wrestling business that will shake your hand and, and say hi to you and be nice to you in front of your face. And then the second you turn your back, I start talking trash about you. I'm not going to do that at all. I will tell you to your face what I think about you, Jerry Briscoe. I got the guts to do that, unlike a lot of other people in the professional wrestling industry. And on Saturday night, May 11th, at the Argosy Bell Casino, I will have a live microphone, Mr. Jerry Briscoe, and I will see you, Jerry Briscoe, and I will tell you exactly what I think of you, and I will make clear to the world 
why that big desk and that big office you've got should belong to Travis Cook.